welcome to another acrylical tutorial. Before we move on, I'd like to thank our patrons in Derivative for their support. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell to support us into making more tutorials. And for more, you can check out our Patreon with different tiers to offer all touch designer files, online tools to create generative art, as well as personalized classes. I will leave the link in the description for anyone who is interested. Now back to the tutorial. Make sure to watch until the end, there's going to be many tips and tricks which you can also use for your future projects. So to get started, I'll import a video of my friend dancing. Now I know that this footage is around 30 seconds long and we're running on 60 fps, so the timeline is actually only 10 seconds right now, so we'll have to change the timeline to match the video. And since my video is 30 seconds long, I'll multiply 600 times 3 and this will also set my timeline to 1800. From here we go to the parameter window and set the play mode to specify index. What this does is if I copy paste this movie file in, the copy will be playing at the exact same time as the first video, instead of starting from the top. And now on the index parameter I have even more options. So if I want to offset the copy by 10 seconds, I'll just increase the index value by 600. Now let's add the layout and we'll have both videos as inputs to get them into the same animation. In the parameter window, set the fit to fit outside and let's click after the layout, attach an alt top and rename it to dancers. Then let's attach another null and we'll use this for the processing of the sobs later. After the null, attach a threshold followed by another null. This threshold will give us the silhouette of the dancer since the wall in the background is white. After the null, let's attach a trace sob. The trace reads the image file and automatically traces it in the sub world. And the parameter window will enable the remove the borders parameter. This will help us eliminate the dirty edges around the image that we don't want traced. And in the same time, let's toggle off the point texture and compute normals. Now, if you notice your footage jittering, right click at the node and disable the adaptive homing. Great, so now we have the base with the main lines. To create the messy lines we saw in the beginning of the video, we'll use the facet sop. The facet sop works as a pipeline to change geometry in stages and lets you control the smoothness of the faceting of a given object. In the parameter window, let's set the points to consolidate fast. The consolidate parameter eliminates the redundancy of having many points that are close to each other by merging them together to form a fewer set of common points. As soon as we change between no consolidation to this new mode, the distance parameter will automatically get enabled and by changing the value of the distance, we can set the distance threshold for removing inline points. Let's copy paste the facet top and for this one we'll toggle off the consolidate parameter and instead we'll remove the inline points. As soon as this is toggled off, we can set the distance threshold for removing inline points. I will set the value here to around 0.149. So now we have the trace and the two facets and in the next step we want to merge them together into one. To do this, we create a merge sop and have all three sops as inputs. Make the merge view reactive and to remove the jitters, we either press A and then Q, which is the shortcut, or we right click and disable the adaptive homing like before. So now that we have all the elements together, we want to further increase the amount of these noisy lines around the silhouette. To achieve this, we attach a copy sop after the merge and in the parameter window we increase the number of copies to 6. Now, one interesting option here would be to increase the uniform scale and by animating this, we could get this cool effect. Whereas decreasing the uniform scale would give us this different effect. We notice that by decreasing the value, we increase the distance between the line copies. And the further we move the value towards one, the closer the lines will get to one another. So let's leave this value at 0.98 for now. In here you could play around with the other parameters as well, like animating the rotation or translation value could also give you a nice effect of a messier animation transitioning back into the silhouette. So for example, we could go back to the uniform scale of 1 and if we translate the animation in the x direction, we could get more copies and we could animate this value getting decreased until we're back at the original state. So this is another possibility, but today we're going to go on another direction. So I'll go back to the values from before and in the next step let's render 
render what we have until now. First, let's add the geometry in the camera, and then we'll add a line material so that we have a little control over the color and the width. Drag and drop the line material to the geo and select parameter material. Lastly, attach a render top and we want this render to match the resolution of the dancer's footage. To do this, we go to the command tab and in the width resolution, we type op dancers dot width. We copy paste this and replace the next parameter for the height. Then, at the end of the network, we attach a norm and before that an RGB key for the black background. And there we have our render. Now here we notice that the lines are too thick, so let's open the parameter window of the line material, go to the setup tab and decrease the width near down to 1.5 and the width far to 1.6. Then back to the camera comp, we increase the translate Z value to get the camera closer to the dancers. From here we'll try to match the lines with the original footage. To do this we insert an overtop after the render top, then attach the dancers to a select top and have the select top as the second input of the over. From here let's go back to the line material and we'll change the line near color to red so that we can better distinguish the lines over the original footage. Now we notice here that the lines don't exactly overlap with the footage, so what we can do to fix this is we manually change the values of the translate X and Z on the camera comp until everything is more or less lined up. Now that we have the main part going, it would be cool to have some random variations over time, like switching between these parts or have some inverted version of these composites. In order to do this, let's attach a switch top before the RGB key and have both the render top and the over top as inputs. Then attach a level after the over top and in the parameter window completely invert the level. Let's attach the level also as an input of the switch and then we'll copy paste the level and attach it in between of the switch and the render top. So now we have several different inputs in the switch and in the parameter window we can switch between all options by changing between the index values of 0, 1, 2 and 3. Now we don't want to have to switch this manually, but rather have it change randomly. So in order to do this, we attach a noise chop first. In the parameter window, we'll go to common and toggle on the time slice. The values of these are going from minus 1 to 1, since the amplitude value is 1. Let's change the amplitude to 0.5 to change the interval between minus 0.5 and 0.5. And if we change the offset value to 0.5, then we'll be moving the whole segment to get values between 0 and 1. Let's attach a math after the noise chop in order to get the integer interpretation of these values. In the parameter window, go to multi-add and multiply by 10. Then back to the op tab and set the integer to round. And this will give us the integers going from 0 to 10. From here, attach a null at the end of the network. And what we want is for every time that the value here changes, a new input index will get selected in our switch. This has to be stable enough, so should we decide to add more inputs to the switch later, it will still work. So let's do this. Let's attach a chop execute after the null. In the second screen, let's open the export and dots mode and open the chop execute dot. By default, the value change is toggled on, so on the export and dots, we'll get rid of all the other functions except for that one. On the first line, let's import random, which we'll use to select the random input for the switch. To do this, first we need to get the switch operator. So we'll say switch, and this is going to be op switch1. So in this variable, we have stored the reference of this operator. This operator has also a component called input connectors, which is a list or an array of input connections here on the left side associated with this switch operator. 
So in here, we first need to find out how many inputs are actually connected to the switch. So we declare a new variable and call it connections. And this will be equal to len for length of switch.inputConnectors. So in our case, this line will give us a value of four connections, but the switch index starts from zero, meaning the third and fourth index will have the same result. So to have both these values line up, we need to subtract one from this line of code. Now that we have this settled, we want to achieve the important thing here, which is a random value between zero and three every time we get a new value on the node chop from down here. Let's declare a variable and call it random connection. And this is going to be random dot rand int. And in here we have to pass two values from zero to connections, as high as the number of connections might be. So now all that's left to do is set the index value to this random connection. So we do this by saying switch, which is the name of the operator, and then dot par, indicating that we want to reference a parameter from the switch, then dot index, which is the name of this specific parameter, and lastly dot val, indicating that we want to change the value. And this value will be the same as the random connection. And there we go, only these four lines of code and it's already working. This is very cool and powerful, I encourage you to try this out and if you want to have more in-depth information about Python and Touch Designer, you could watch our Absolute Beginner video with tips and tricks on how to play around with code in Touch Designer. Now another important parameter here is this noise period. If the randomness of the scenes is way too fast, you can control this by changing the period value and by doing this, the switch will change between the inputs less frequently. What we did here is very flexible and since we changed the input connectors, you could apply any type of effects after these inputs and it will get immediately reflected on our animation. So the important information to take from this video is how we can use the facet, how we can powerfully use the chop execute and how we can easily and randomly switch between different inputs. I hope this tutorial was helpful and inspires you to dance and come up with your own version of this animation. Thank you so much for watching, leave any suggestions or questions in the comments and I will see you very soon with another tutorial. Until then, have a great time! Bye!